Hello, this is Michael Sullivan. I am the CEO of Life Model Works, and I'm glad to be with you today. Thank you for joining this interview and this little video chat. So Life Model Works uh, is an organization, it's a ministry that integrates the latest and best neuroscience with a biblical worldview to bring about identity transformation into the image of Christ. And we also promote emotional and relational intelligence. We are very dedicated to learning how God matures people in general and how he is specifically conforming his children uh, into the image of Jesus. And we are doing some chats and some interviews. We're calling it Renovated Lives. And we are very blessed because we have amazing friends, and we are excited to introduce them to our audience. Uh, we are talking today about the integration of classic spiritual disciplines with brain skills, maturity skills, that the life model has kind of pioneered. And uh, we are joined here today by Dr. Jim Wilder, and he will introduce our guest, but Jim is our thought leader and neurotheologian and has written a new book. So Jim, tell us about that. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be with you. Uh, the book I've just finished is renovated. It's going to be coming out with NAV Press in the spring of 2020 on the intersection of neuroscience and spiritual life. It's based on my interactions with Dallas Willard and uh, how spiritual formation and character formation uh, overlap and should be put together. So um, we're I've uh, been talking about those spiritual disciplines and the uh, relational skills, and you have some interesting a phrase for each of those, don't you, uh, Michael? I actually do, yeah. Um, as I've thought about it, and I read uh, the manuscript of the book, I thought of uh, spiritual disciplines as humility drills, because the humility drills, the disciplines keep us in our smaller space where we belong, and it, and it makes space for God to be who he is, which is really big. So we are weak, he is strong. So we have these we have these uh, humility drills, but they're but they're connected in your in chapter ten. They're connected to relational skills, and so the humility drills are in the slow track of our being, and the uh, brain skills or the maturity skills are in the fast track of our being. So that makes a big difference, and they're a wonderful dynamic duo when we understand that. Well, today we get to meet uh, Pastor and Counselor Jim Lapna, who's lived at this intersection and uh, put it to work in lots of ways. He's an author of the Joyful Journey book um, that many of you know of about the Emmanuel process. He's a Emmanuel journaling trainer, an international speaker, a pastor and therapist. And he also uh, practices all these things in his personal life. Uh, in fact, I believe... Um, you meet with Jen Johnson, who's the president of the Dallas Willard Foundation, to work on the on the spiritual discipline side. And you've been to the training, the Thrive training, to learn the relational skills. So we're interested to hear how those are coming together um, in your life and in your work, John. Great, glad to be here. So do you want me to, how do you want me to um, just respond? That's pretty open. So just. Yeah. Well, uh, well I'm I'll just help. greeting you and Michael will ask you some questions. Okay. He's yes. good. Tell, tell us a little bit about your experience with Dallas Willard and his writings and how those have affected you through the years. Yeah, it was good to kind of think about this um, a little bit because I was thinking, you know, his writings are tremendous. They've been very formative. His writings and more than, his writings, but also his like YouTube videos, audio books, uh, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my first introduction was when John Ortberg became a pastor at Willow Creek in the mid nineties. He had a, um, he talked about his mentor and that was Dallas Willard. So, and I remember one phrase was he talked about like ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And so, that was the first introduction, mid '90s, um, and then I remember reading "Hearing God," which is like such a good book because it's accessible. And I love Dallas, all his spectrum, but that one's an e easier one to read for for many of us. Um, and then, of course, the um, Divine Conspiracy is revolutionary in understanding what the e essence of the gospel is and how to participate in the kingdom of God here and now 
with Jesus. So that's been profoundly helpful. Talk a little bit about your experience with spiritual disciplines throughout your journey. Yeah, so preceding Dallas Willard um, was, I read Richard Foster's book, Celebration of the Disciplines, mm -hmm. in high school, and I know they, uh, they work together and they're friends, and so really understanding that they're an access to God's grace, power, and action in our life, and I, understanding that, so I didn't have to clean up a mess of understanding of spiritual disciplines, which I'm very grateful for. Um, I just had it from the beginning, which is like a gift from God that that's how it happened. So, you know, obviously study, meditation, um, worship, all those were a part of my early upbringing. But then later when I learned to access silence and solitude, and then a little bit later fasting, those were really transformative and powerful for me to quiet down and not rely on my own power, but learn how to access in a fumbling way, God's presence and power in my life. And then so those are pretty powerful. Pretty powerful, formative things for you. Yes. So, so then the life model comes along in your life at a certain point and intersects with the practice of spiritual disciplines. How do you see the wisdom and practices of the life model fitting together with the classic spiritual disciplines? So I think the classic spiritual disciplines have been their wisdom that people of God have cultivated over thousands of years and just kind of discerned and through scripture and through trial and error. And then I think the um, brain skills are things that have are more recent, last hundred years, but 50, 30, you know, discerning how to take those processes and connect with God and with one another and even quiet ourselves. So to me, the, the goal is to see Christ formed in us. And that actually means in my behavior in how I treat my wife, my kids, when I'm exhausted, and I want to just yell and scream, which I do. <laughs> but then my recovery time is much quicker because of both of those things operating in my life. The, uh, the disciplines as well as, oh, okay, I blew it. My relational circuits are off. It's a good time to quiet down and then give my kids space or my wife space and come back and repair, reconcile do the things that Christ is commanding me to do or drawing me into. So I, I just see it, them informing each other back and forth and different angles. What was your first exposure to the life model? It's, a, it's an interesting story because Sungshim was at a Bible study fellowship at Pasadena Nazarene Church, Pasnaz, and I had the day off. So I had Zachariah, my now almost 13 year old son, in an ergo, so he was I, carrying him around, and I had two hours to kill, and I found a little pamphlet in the church. And you know, it's like just black and white, and I'm like, Sungshim, this looks really good. And she's like, whatever, who's Jim Wilder? I never heard of him. That just is a matter of fact, you know, you know Sungshim. And she loves Jim Wilder now, before he was whoever. Yeah. Um, and then I told Sungshim and I told Anna and then a various assortments of, I went to some of those classes at that church, Sungshim and Anna and got some girls together, they went. So we, we took some of the classes and then eventually I think I read Living from the Heart Jesus Gave You. So it's, it's, a, I, it's a mystery which one started first, but I think the classes did, the training did. And if you were to pick out a couple of things from life model practices that have made a difference in your life, what would you, what would you choose? That is, I thought of it ahead of time, but it's really hard because it's been a, a big chunk of my life now. The importance of concrete practices around gratitude, mm -hmm. just like interacting with God, inter with others, appreciation. And then actually learning to feel that in our bodies. And that has an impact on our ability to sense, detect God's presence, and actually see other people as human beings. That's one that's so simple, but actually having a group of people doing it regularly or failing to do it, but just encouraging each other, that is transformative. And then quieting. Just, it's again, 
some of the simplest stuff, but learning how important it is to quiet ourselves by ourselves or give each other room, noticing overwhelm. Um, and then even noticing the knowledge of how the right brain works in ourselves and in other people and how my parents' right brains were downloaded to me without my request. And I got good things and not so good things and so do my kids. Um, so just knowing that there's no like blame or judgment, but then, oh, now I can actually do something with this knowledge Beautiful. and seek out people with right brains that I want to be like. Beautiful. John, thank you so much. This is awesome. How about you, Dr. Wilder? You want to chime in? Yeah, well, there's a couple of things that came to my mind. One is uh, just the way that John enthusiastically uh, injects uh, his relationships with what he's learning, uh, which is a great deal of fun to be around. And the other thing that uh, didn't quite get highlighted in this, but back in high school uh, age, I believe it was, John, yep. you kind of had the idea, what would life be like and why can't we just talk with God as we're going along? You, uh, you wanted this interactive lifestyle to be a part of yeah. you and your friends. And uh, now I think you've discovered uh, that this, yes. is a, this is a real life possibility. Yes. Yeah, no, you, you are reflecting back to something that I just remember being in high school with good friends. And if Jesus is present and the Holy Spirit lives in me, why can't we just talk to and with him as though he's actually like right here? And my friends were kind to me like, okay, John, like, nice. Like, I don't know what to do with that. Or I, I didn't know what to do with it either. Just an impulse of a desire. And then here we are in community with similar impulses to connect with Jesus and one another. Like, yeah, I think the intersection of how can we actually be a community of people around the presence of God? That's what, that's how I want to live. And that's, yeah, that's what I like about you. I know. Thank you. It's nice to hear that back. Uh, thank you, Jim. So, so this is exciting stuff. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that as I've learned about the relational brain skills is that um, people have an intuition that these things are true and they hear the science and they go, Oh yeah, that's kind of the way it works in my experience too. And so there's this inner uh, witness to the, mm -hmm. to the reality of how God has designed our being to operate and our brains to operate. I like to say, if we know more profoundly how our brains operate, then we can now cooperate more effectively mm -hmm. with uh, the, the change and uh, into the image of Christ that the Holy Spirit is after in our lives. Yes. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us today. This is John Lop now. If you didn't catch his last name and uh, presence and practice is their ministry. I see the sign yeah. up there. And um, we're very excited about this book that Dr. Wilder's written. It's again called Renovated, and the subtitle is God, Dallas Willard, and the Church that Transforms. We're mm -hmm. going to be having uh, advanced sales of this book, so you need to follow us on our Facebook page, which is Life Model Works, and also our website, which is lifemodelworks.org. There are a lot of free materials on our website, and if you want to know more about who we are, uh, that's a great place to go. And we want to just thank you for being a part of this chat, uh, our audience, but also thank you, Dr. Wilder and John Lopnow. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jim and Michael. I appreciate it. All right, we're signing off. Bye bye.